Well, let's have a word of prayer, shall we? Amen. Amen. Well, Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this beautiful March 8th, 2020. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for this time, Lord. Uh, we pray, Lord, for open hearts, open minds, open spirits, Father God, uh, to the flow, Father God, of today. Uh, we, we do believe, Father God, that through the flow today and through the, o- the open channels, Father God, you have a word, you have a message, you have a picture, you have a vision, you have something, Father God, for those who are open and willing. And for those, Father God, who are also open and willing uh, in the future. So we thank you, Lord, for this time, Lord, and uh, bless everybody here, bless everybody on live stream, and everybody who is to hear this in the future. Uh, bless this time in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hey, I'm up. Well, good morning to everybody. Uh, uh, like, uh, well, my name is Andrew Sales, for those of you who don't know. Um, I am, I'm just the husband to Christina. And I'm just kidding. Um, and, uh, no, we, uh, I'm just, we're just so happy to be here. Christina as well, my lovely wife, uh, associate pastor of the Oasis of the Valley. Uh, we were given, we were blessed with the opportunity to, to speak to you today. And, uh, we are just, we're very, very happy, very, very happy. And I believe we're very, very full as well as a result of, um, just speaking with one another, um, doing our research, doing our, listening to the word of God, listening to our, our spirits and seeing what, uh, what he would like to say today. So, uh, without further ado, uh, Let's get into it. Amen? Well, today's title, and you may have seen it on social media or, or, or whatnot, but it is Celebrating the Harvest. Amen. And uh, yeah, it is a good one. It's a good one. It's, I, I think it encapsulates, encapsulates a lot of uh, just what we want to talk about today and bring to light. And, um, you know, Celebrating the Harvest. Um, who, else, who has heard of a... Who, when you think of the word harvest, shout it out. What do you think of right away? When you think of harvest, anything, just shout it out. Cool. Anything else? Anything else? Shout it out. Blessing. Awesome. Fruit, blessing, increase, gathering, overflow. Anything else? Newness, fulfillment. Awesome. All valid, all awesome. Amen. And, um, not to, and, and just it's just it's really really cool, and um, uh, I just wanted to ask really quick if if our tech team has uh, there's an image that I wanted to uh, uh, while they're getting that ready, uh, just wanted to um, talk about that. It's so cool. I love the word harvest because it does bring so many positive things to it. I mean, it's it's a time for us to gather together and to celebrate. I mean, it's a harvest, right? Uh, there are harvests of food. There are harvests of people, I guess, mindsets. You, the list goes on and on. And it's so great to come together and celebrate that. You know, the, one of the great, um, I guess, examples of that in our modern day society is Thanksgiving. Uh, we come together on, it changes from year to year, but as you know, it's near the end of November. It's on one of the days has changed. It's on a Thursday. You all know that, right? So, um, but anyway, we come together and we celebrate, and it's so cool we get to come together, we celebrate, um, a lot of us did go to the store probably to get all of our stuff, so we didn't really till the ground and harvest our cornbread or our turkey or whatever, right? But my point is, we come together and we celebrate, and in that time as well, what do we do? We don't just come together and say, hey, how you doing? We give thanks, yeah. We, we, we go ahead and we don't just eat the turkey and whatnot. We actually, I know one, one of the, I guess, traditions, if you want to call it, or one of the, the opportunities that we do, at least in, in my family and the families uh, around us, we come together and we say, hey, what has happened this year that we're thankful for? What, has, what, has, what have we gone through individually, together, that has brought us to this point of celebration? What new things has happened this year? And uh, we celebrate those times. Um, Hey, they might not be up here where they're awesome to look. I, I get what I'm trying to say, that there are some things that were challenging throughout the year. However, going through those challenges, you may have learned something new. You come out on the other side to something else, change mindsets. Hopefully you get my point in saying that. But you're, you come to a point and you, you're thankful together for what has happened in your life to, by individually, corporately as a family, the whole nine yards. 
And if uh, if we do, I do have an image really quick. But before we put it up, I just okay. Well, we put it up. <laughs> well, you got a little sneak peek. Okay, here it is again. Okay. So, um, social media. I I love to. In, I I love I love to um, uh, subscribe to a lot of investing uh, channels and whatnot. And because uh, I, I love I love to learn about investing, love to learn about it because uh, I'm very interested in it. That's one of my passions. I, I love to keep continue to learn on that. So that's it. That's that's another little side note of what's happening in my life. I love to continue um, learning about investing. But one of the one of the constant pictures that I see on on Instagram is, is where I and, and Facebook, too. But Instagram, I see this picture in many different variations. And when I thought about this today, this is just one illustration that came to mind. And. It does say the uh, iceberg illustration, uh, illusion, sorry, but I just want to focus on what's happening here. So I wouldn't, don't get caught up too much on what, what's being said. I just want you to get the main point. Um, we got this iceberg here. It's floating on the ocean. Just let's say that. It's floating on some water. Okay. Um, in some pictures, this top part, super dinky. And then uh, and on the bottom, way big. Uh, I think um, we all uh, have heard about the Titanic, right? They, you know, big, big iceberg. It was huge. Uh, but so just think of a big iceberg. Um, you know, a lot of people see probably on the surface that little part, that success. Way to go. That's so awesome. Um, uh, I don't know, but just trying to think of it as, as an example. Think just think of examples that you have had in your life. Just think of something where you've seen it and it's like, wow, that's success. Maybe in someone's life or, or, or what have you on, on the surface. Yeah, the results. But like what maybe we don't see is all this other stuff that they had to go through to get there. Exactly. Persistence. They maybe encountered some failures, had to go through some sacrifice, maybe even encountered some disappointments. Maybe it didn't go their way or whatever, whatever it may be. Uh, maybe develop some good habits, you know, changed mindsets, changed the way that they wake up in the morning, yeah. go to sleep maybe. <laughs> hard work. Oh, my gosh. Who likes hard work <laughs> initially right off the bat? I, would I rather do something easy or would I want to do something hard? I like this picture too. When you go to the gym too, you're working it's hard work on those muscles. They grow. Yeah. Yeah. See how it connects. Dedication. Maybe they're not hitting the mark right off the bat, but dedication, sticking to it. Eventually, they'll hit their goal. All these things, so many more lead up to the success. And what I believe this is also a picture of is the harvest. This is not just the harvest where we talk about, you know, the reaping of what has already been grown or we've gone through at the very end, this is also a part of that process of the harvest. And what happens in this whole thing is growth. It's not just here. It is here too. And when you go through these things, it changes you. And... Um, I'm going to pull up on some notes here. We like notes, don't we? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Another thing about harvests, they come and they go. Timing. There are seasons. One's this is just an example to bring to bring a point. One season's crop of corn one year is not going to be the same as the next versus the next versus the next. For many reasons, it could be e e ecological. Maybe there was enough rain, maybe too much rain. Maybe they invest in, in maybe an inf infestation, things like that. So what happens is in the season, we want to be mindful of what's happening in our season, you know. Maybe take grasp of the opportunity in our season, right? Because it might not be here the next time. Yeah. Amen? Maybe God wants to do something in that particular season that's uh, not going to happen in the next one. Yeah, and that's what I wanted to point out too, was that and when a farmer goes ahead and encounters a new problem, he goes ahead and 
does the hard work, develops even newer habits to fight, just to get to a new level. Amen. And you know, while maybe personally you are going through your you are going through the harvest time in your life, just maybe if you're open and willing to go forward and connect with somebody else who might also have something that might be connecting to your challenge, or maybe there's a challenge in their life and you're connecting to them, you are also connecting to their persistence, to their failures, to their sacrifice, to their disappointments, their good habits, their hard work, and their hard, your, their hard, their hard dedication. You're connecting together and you both are getting elevated. And there might be something that, let's just say they're a farmer and I'm a farmer. Maybe that, that may be something that that farmer has that I might, not, n- might need. And because I connect with them, we are able to bless each other. Maybe there is an unlocking in that. And maybe it's a step of faith. Maybe you don't know that they do have something. But in going forward and saying yes to that opportunity, maybe to that season, to that specific opportunity, maybe God is trying to say something. I believe through all of these things, yeah, God is going to do great and amazing things. And so um, there is one other thing that I had written down here, but I do believe this is for another message. And it's something... <laughs> And um, if I may, if, if I may just tie into it, or if I, sorry, if I may just touch on it, it's the word control. Um, <laughs> you know, while control is comforting, isn't it? Why do I control things? Because it gives me comfort. I control things because it might go ahead and keep me from getting hurt. That may be one thing, but mainly in my life, I know I do that. I control things because I don't want to get hurt. I'm unaware. I'm, I'm, I'm afraid of what might be coming. There's too much risk, you know. So what do I lean on my control? I lean on something that I, I can control because, hey, I know that it's going to keep me safe or whatnot. But, but you know what? If we release control, I believe if we'd release control of our thoughts, our minds, our decisions, maybe of the grasp of our heart, things like this can lead to, I mean, we could actually go ahead and maybe connect into these things, connect into the people around us in the season that's happening to unlock, maybe there are some, maybe there are some things that we're waiting for that we're hoping for, that we're desiring for elevation in our life, that maybe going through that and releasing control would continue to, that would bless that area. Amen. Pastor Christina, I feel like it's time. Amen. Philippians 2, verses 4 and 5, uh, the mirror translation. To discover your own completeness in Christ frees you to turn your attention away from yourself to others. The way Jesus saw himself is the only valid way to see yourself. So it all starts with how we see ourselves. Now, my kids got this puzzle thanks to the Atkinsons who took them out to the movies recently. And I want to use this as an example. Andrew, would you hold the mic for me? There's a lot of different pieces here. I'm actually going to get a little closer to live stream. But you see most of them look alike, with the exception of one. I'm going to show you live stream. So most of the pieces look like this, kind of like a little pyramid type thing, okay? Like a little pyramids. But there's this one red piece that doesn't look like that, okay? Now, Andrew, what I want you to do 
So I want you to put these together, but I'm gonna hang on to this red weird one. Okay, good. Now do me a favor and just put it right there. Sit it down. Let's see. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. The puzzle doesn't work. This is the missing piece. Is this one just as significant as those ones? Mm -hmm. Maybe more so. Andrew, now please put it together with this piece. Now put it down. We needed that red piece that looked different than all the rest. We needed it to be complete. Amen? Now I'm going to use an example of someone most of us grew up with. Um of their harvest, how they harvested. Um, this, because every, har every harvest, every um, harvesting um, method is different based on different people. So we're gonna talk about this one person in particular. It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood, a neighborly day for a beauty. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? I have always wanted to have a neighbor just like you. I've always wanted to live in a neighborhood with you so. Let's make the most of this beautiful day. Since we're together, we might as well say, Would you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? Won't you please? Won't you please? Please won't you be my neighbor? You help to make each day a special day by just your being yourself. There's nobody else in the whole world who's exactly like you. And people can like you exactly as you are. The Mr. Rogers Show ran from 1968 to 2001. He discussed topics that other TV shows usually didn't talk about, such as the death of a pet, things kids see in the news, divorce, um, about how to deal with death and grieving, how to support our friends, how to deal with anger. He taught us that no one defines us. He taught us that he was proud of us and to embrace love. Now, would you please show the side-by-side -side picture? We may have discussed this before, but I did a little more research on it. It's actually really powerful, and um, 
there's really no better way for me to explain what's going on or what Mr. Rogers was all about except to read off this particular website, which I found other s websites that confirm what I'm about to read. This is from Hornet.com. Fred Rogers, better known as Mr. Rogers, has been a force of a force for good and kindness throughout the world, even after his death in 2003. Rogers was a Presbyterian minister whose ministry was his television program, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Though evangelicals would sometimes write to him asking him to condemn homosexuality, Rogers never would, instead saying he and God loved everyone just as they were. But this wasn't the extent of Mr. Rogers' gay activism. As it turns out, he had been an ally since the 60s. Um, before I go further, I just want to remind you that segregation ended in the 50s. So this is still very recent, okay? Rogers intentionally hired gay people to work on Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. Two members of the neighborhood John Reardon and Francois Clemens were both openly gay and among some of Rogers' closest friends. Clemens, as Officer Clemens, first appeared in 1968, that's this one right here, and was also the first black person to have a reoccurring role on children's television. That's 60, what did I say, 68? Well. The show started 68, this particular episode was 69, this was 1993. The icon Fred Rogers not only was showing my brown skin in the tub with his white skin as two friends, but as I was getting out of the tub, he was helping me dry my feet. Clemens later compared the scene to the Bible passage in which Jesus washed Peter's feet saying, the significance of Fred doing that for a black gay man is not lost. I felt unworthy, like Peter in the Bible. Why did he choose me? Clemens never uh, came out openly gay on the program. Um, it was more so a business call and Mr. Rogers said, it's not an issue for me. I don't think you're less of a person. I don't think you're immoral. Clemens was devastated and started to uncontrollably sob. Rogers came around the desk and cradled him. When Clemens asked if that meant, th <laughs> meant the end of their relationship, Rogers said, now wait just a minute, young man. <laughs> Who says that our relationship has to come to an end? You need to decide just what it is you want in life, France. Talent can give you so much in this life, but that sexuality thing can take it all away, faster than you can ever imagine. You can have it all if you can keep that part out of the limelight. Have you ever thought of getting married? People do make some compromises in life. Yeah, sounds a little, mm, I can understand why Clemens would feel a little bit off with that statement. But let me just continue, trust me. Hang, hang on there with me. Due to Roger's advice, he, he married a woman in 1968, but in 1974, Carol and Francois Clemens divorced. Though Carol and Francois got along well and loved each other, it was still difficult, but Clemens kept talking to Roger, saying he was the one person I could talk to about being gay. It was through these discussions that Rogers realized he had made a mistake. He later changed his advice, urging Clemens to find a gay man he was happy with. He also stopped asking Clemens to remain in the closet. So Rogers had to go through his own realization about God and about what, what, what the heart of God was and love was and everything. So even Rogers had some growing to do. Amen? We, yeah, we all have this, this growing to do. But Clemens actually called Mr. Rogers a surrogate father. So he valued Rogers that much. And instead of reading this, 
I want you to hear in the second video Clemens' own words on what he said about Mr. Rogers. Fred came to me and said, I have this idea. You could be a police officer. That kind of stopped me in my tracks. I grew up in the ghetto, and I did not have a positive opinion of police officers. Policemen were sicking dogs and water hoses on people. And I really had a hard time putting myself in that role. So I was not excited about being Officer Clemens at all. But there was one particular scene that Fred and I did where he had his feet resting in this plastic pool on a hot day. Oh, there's Officer Clemens. Hi, Officer Clemens. Come oh, in. Rogers, how are you? Fine. And he invited me to come over and to rest my feet in the water sure with him. Is. Would you like to join me? Okay, sure. The icon Fred Rogers not only was showing my brown skin in the tub with his white skin as two friends, but as I was getting out of that tub, he was helping me dry my feet. There, that one's dry. Thank you. And so that scene touched me in a way that I, I was not prepared. Sometimes just a minute like this will really make a difference. I think he was making a very strong statement. That was his way. I still was not convinced that Officer Clemens could have a positive influence in the neighborhood and in the real world neighborhood, but I think I was proven wrong. You were on Mr. Rogers' neighborhood for a long time. Yeah. I discovered a friend for life. I'll never forget one day I was watching him film a session, and you know how at the end of the program, he takes his sneakers off, he hangs up his sweater, and he says, you make every day a special day just by being you. And I like you just the way you are. I was looking at him when he was saying that. And he walks over to where I was standing. And I said, Fred, were you talking to me? And he said, yes, I have been talking to you for years. But you heard me today. It was like telling me I'm okay as a human being. That was one of the most meaningful experiences I'd ever had. I'm so proud of you, Francois. Oh, thank you, Fred. Do you have time to give a song to my friend and me? I sure do. There are many ways to say I love you. There are many ways to say I care about you. Many ways, many ways, many ways to say. Mr. Rogers used TV as his way of bringing together a harvest. You know, he went to seminary, went to, went to school, became a Presbyterian minister, but instead said, you know what? This is my ministry. This is how I can reach people. This is how I can touch people. And I'm going to hire certain people because I know it'll touch them. He went out of his way to do this. It was a labor of love from Mr. Rogers, and even a labor of love for Francois Clemens, who initially didn't want to be the officer role. But as a result, he touched people too. It became this domino effect, this chain reaction that happened. Everyone was impacted, and it all started with love. In Philippians 1, verse 9, the mirror word. It is my desire for each one of you that the realization of love's completeness in you will increasingly burst through all boundaries and that every sphere of your relationship with others will be greatly impacted by your intimate acquaintance with love. Amen. You know, in, in talking about harvest time and seasons specific to their time, we believe that we can all agree that we're all going through a season, correct? Amen. 
that in this time, in this new time, Uh, that is being been, that is being shared throughout the last few weeks of this new season. I believe not just in the body of Christ, but also here in the oasis. That you take the opportunity to say yes. And enter in to see that it is good. How do, you, how do I do that, you may say? How might I go ahead and enter into something that is so foreign to me, maybe, that I have no experience in? Well, God says, I have all the experience you need. Partner with me. And I have loads of things to show you, to show the people that you connect with. I have keys to doors that you need unlocked. I've got the key ring with me. Will you take my hand and join me in this harvest time? I got things I want to show you. Just say yes. I promise you, it's going to be fun. I promise you, as we elevate to new levels, I'm going to take you up every, each and every single step. I promise you, I'll be there. You may slip, but I got your hand. No worries. Come with me. I'm going somewhere. We're getting there together. I promise you, we're going. Join with me, because it's going to be a ride, and it's going to be awesome. Because in this season time, right now, God has got awesome things he's doing in the kingdom. He's got awesome things he's doing here at the Oasis. He's got awesome things he's doing in your life. Partner with him and go forward. You know, there was a story that... Well, not really more of a story, but more of an experience that Christina and I had last Friday. Uh, You see, this last Thursday and Friday, Christina and I got to have an awesome time together at Disney's California Adventure in Disneyland, which is really great. Amen to that. And on our last day and probably our last hour there, we decided to together go to the, you know, the Starbucks that was there. If you've ever been to California Adventure, they got this Buena Vista Street, this new area, and there was a Starbucks there. And we're just, you know, sitting down, enjoying our time, people watching, just in, taking it all in, you know, because in about an hour or so, we have to go pick up our kids, you know, so. And um, along through the sea of people walks um, custodial service man works for Disney. It says officially right on his shirt. He made sure to tell us custodial services. <laughs> and I'm getting to, I'll just remember that. We see him come by and he's, you know, he looks like he's in his maybe 70s, 60s. African-American man. He's been there. You can tell he's been there for a long time. He's going ahead and he's sweeping up. Got the biggest smile on his face. No one is in, I mean, the smile is there, not because someone said something. It's just, it's always on his face. He comes right by us, you know, sweeping, and we and he, you know, our eyes kind of connect, and we said, "Hey, how are you?" He's like, "I'm doing great. I'm glad you asked." And he came over to us, and I I remember this because he, <laughs> he 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 got so happy. He went ahead and he put down his broom. He put down his uh, or laid it off to side his dustpan, and he came over to our table, leaned over, and he started telling us telling us. Some rhymes. I'm telling you, this guy's gifted on the spot. Um, he started talking about right off the bat, without even asking us if we were believers, right off the bat, saying like, you know how God has been gracious in his life and what God's doing for it, doing, uh, doing, partnering with him while he's on the job there. And he was literally, I like to say it, spitting these rhymes, you guys, like off the top of his head. And he's like, uh, gosh, I wish we had recorded it. He was, after every single rhyme he did, because he gave glory to God in every single rhyme, he'd go, woo, 
<laughs> like literally would do that. <laughs> he was celebrating and like just in every moment. And at the end, it was really cool. Every single time he would just, and then we would talk, we would literally, remember, we would go ahead and move on to like another subject in the Lord, of course. And then he would take that and he would run with it. This guy had a, a cool gifting of, of rhyming anyway. And he, but <laughs> the point was, the point was, and, and he would, you know, he would, he pointed at a shirt one time because, you know, we, we talked about, thank you for what you do here. And he was like, he pointed to a shirt and the, see this right here, what does this say? And he would say, custodial services, yeah, service. You know, he's like, he's talking about how he's just loving being being a service to God and just loving being there and having a happy taking every single moment. One time he asked, he's like, he asked me, he's like, he said, Hey, um, where do you see God? He's like, When was the last time you saw God? And I and right there I felt right, was, right now. He's like, ah woo <laughs> He's just doing everything. <laughs> I mean, he spent a good, I mean, it felt like 20 minutes. It felt like he was just, he was, he was just like hanging out with us and just having a great time. But I love that near the end too, and this struck me that how it connects to today, it could connect. That's how I see it is, um, you know, we're, we're doing our cordial things. Thank you so much. He, he stopped for a minute and looked at you and said, you know what, you guys, I'm glad this happened. I believe this is divine. You guys made my day. And, I mean, maybe to some that's like, okay, cool, you know, but that, how profound is that, you know, that's, it's huge, it's huge. And of course, he went on along his way again, he'd see him just sweeping up and just, just going along, continuing to just be him. His name was Chester. Yeah, his name was Chester. And he just continuing to be Chester in this world and just continuing to be of service and just to connect, just continuing to be a connection. And I believe that his ministry and how that connects to, it just, that spurred, I believe, kind of what we're talking about today, but also connecting to what has been corporately been saying. It was just really cool to see that through his service of maybe his harvesting, you know, through trying to connect with us through that harvest celebration, he was blessed as well. He even said it right at the very end. You guys made my day. That's really cool. So that was just proof right there that this is just was really cool experience. It was like that was Chester's version of, of Harvest too. For him, it was it was serving. But yeah, he, he was sweeping by, you know, his his accent. How y'all doing? You know, he he had that from the south, you know, sound. How y'all do? What does it say right here? You know, it was it was very it was it was fantastic. Um, and you know, we found out that our wedding anniversaries are the same. Um, he brought it up. He, he's like, yeah. He said, you know how long I've been married? 50, it was 52 years or something. 57 years, something like that. And on April 10th, I was like, oh, that's our anniversary too. <laughs> um, it was just really cool that we connected. But he, found, he was able to find the joy within just doing custodial work. And that is how he is spreading light to people. That's how he's sharing love to people. <laughs> It was just, it was a really great experience. And so that, you know, it got me thinking, and maybe Andrew too, it's what's, what, how do we harvest? You know, what are we doing to continue to express love um, and joy to the world? What is it we do in our daily walk that is, a, is an example of harvest? Um, whether it be, I don't know, harvesting, um, souls, hearts, um, sure there's more practical like finances and stuff like that, but really, what, what does a God harvest look like? Amen? Oh, and yes, we are all connected. I love this so much because it just shows us that God can use anyone, anyone, even the ones that look a little more unique, different colors, different shapes, but we are all connected and that one person will impact another and another and another, but how we all need each other to function correctly. No one's an outcast. No one. Amen. 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 Well, amen. Let's, uh, amen. You can <laughs> clap. Amen. Amen. <laughs> well, let's, let's, uh,
Let's not just put a lid on this. Let's um, let's elevate this with prayer, man. Amen. <laughs> it's all connected, y'all. It's all connected. Amen. It's all connected. <laughs> Amen. Well, Father God, we thank you again uh, for this beautiful day, this beautiful time, the beautiful people here, Father God, the beautiful people on live stream, the beautiful people you got here in your kingdom, Father God, you got on this earth, the beautiful people that are just a part of you, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for each and every single individual life, how unique they are, what they have to bring, what, what kind of connections they have, Lord, what they already have inside them, Lord, that is going to be unlocked, Father God, the potentials that they have, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for opportunities to connect into this harvest time, Father God, as as it's being uh, focused on today, the harvest, Father God. And, and we thank you, Father God, um, that as they continue, Father God, as people continue to say yes, Lord, you will continue to unlock things that are already there already there that is so key all the already there nothing that's so that's nothing that's out there that i have to attain it's something that's already there we thank you lord to that that as people move forward father god they will continue to build up those muscles father god through through the work father god and that the harvest time lord father god is not just the success the vision of the end but lord is the beginning the middle and the end and everything in between and we celebrate in all of that father god we thank you, Lord, um, for harvest time and all that it culminates in the word, in the process of it. And we thank you, Lord, um, for this continuation of the process that we are living in right now that we, that's been talked about and the continuing of the conversation, whatever that may look like. We thank you, Lord, that this continues to elevate and move forward. I pray, Father God, that this... Um, that this may be the beginning, may may be a beginning to to, uh, to something in someone's life right now. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hi, I'm Pastor Karen of Oasis of the Valley, and I'm here with Pastor Christine and Dr. John, and we'd like to share something with you. If you don't live in the local area and you'd like to be part of our Oasis Fellowship, we've got a way to connect. We'd like to get to know you personally by video conference calls and telephone calls. And Dr. John will tell you more about how that came about. It was just a few weeks ago, in literally one week's time, I got several emails from people in different parts of the United States and even overseas who are interested in finding a church in their area that's preaching the same powerful message that we are and in the way we are that's quite unique. And unfortunately, I couldn't give them really an answer. I know of a couple of churches and friends that are, are ministering like this, but honest, there's not too many. And we are truly trying to press forward into a whole new arena in God right now. And uh, what wound up happening was that the thought occurred to me, well, we've got all this amazing technology. Why can't we pastor them with the video conferencing and stuff that you yeah. were talking about and minister into their life? And who knows what God will be able to do through that. With enough people, maybe we'll be able to start a church out there. Sounds good. So if you're interested, please click the link below and we'll explain more.